the new Alpine A110, and on my right, a car that is categorically not a direct rival for the A110. The McLaren 570S costs something like three times the price. However, there are enough similarities between the two cars that we wanted to get them together anyway. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? They are obviously not direct rivals, but they have their engine in the same place. They're both turbocharged. They're both two-seat small coupes that put driving pleasure before performance numbers, don't they? So it's worth having a non-twin test, twin test to see what the nuances are. Now, this is what we do at Autocar. Sometimes we compare two direct rivals, and sometimes we mix it up a little bit like we are now. If you subscribe, you will not miss a single one of our videos. And remember to like, turn notifications on, and comment. Well, to get us underway, yeah. Mr. Matthew Pryor, I just want to tell you a little bit about this A110. I know you've driven this car, and you're a big fan of it. Yeah, I love it. So I think a good way to get going is to just describe this car a little bit and tell these guys what it's like to drive because it, it sets us up for the, the comparison with the McLaren. Okay. So the first thing you notice, I think, is that it's very compact. You then notice how light the car feels. This road is actually very smooth and very flat, but I've driven it on moorland roads, yump, you know, rollicking, yumping, jumping moorland roads, really tricky roads. And that's where you appreciate the genius of this car's suspension, of its damping, of the, the way the chassis works over a difficult road surface. Genius, not too strong a word? I'm happy using genius. I, right. I, I drove it across the Moreland Road yeah. yesterday in Exmoor, and I honestly think it's one of the best cars I've driven over that sort of road That's surface. Cool. That's good to hear. The whole point, I suppose, is that it's sophisticated and it's fun. It's got an amount of grip, front and rear, not too much, but enough that you can lean on it and start to drive the car at the limit of that grip. Yeah. And that's, for me, that's where the fun in this car comes from. And as a package, I mean, we are not comparing apples with apples, are we? But does it feel worth the money? 50, what is it, 50-ish? It's 52,000 pounds. This is the A110 Premier Edition, which is the launch model. So it's limited to 1,955 of them. Okay. 1955 is the year Jean Redelais oh, founded of course. Alpine. Of course, see what it did there. And this is about 52,000 pounds. So it's more expensive than the models that will follow, the, the yeah. Legende and the Pure. But even so, I think at 52,000 pounds, it's such a great car to drive that I think it justifies it. That's cool. So it's a pretty good time, isn't it, for cars like like this, 50 grand coupe base, because there's a 780 Cayman, but which, I don't know, you'd ne I'd never have thought anything gets close to it, it's just, that's just it. It Cayman, was untouchable yeah, just a couple of years it. ago. And then they've put a four cylinder on it and everybody's gone, oh, wait a minute, so the M2 competition, the upcoming Supra, yeah. and this as well, and I think, you know, you, having driven all of them a bit, you could have a road test, you could have a road test. And, they, and the Cayman could come anywhere between first and fourth. Amazing, isn't yeah. it? It was unthinkable just yeah, a couple totally. of years ago. Yeah, totally. Um, the thing that stands out for me about this car, you've already touched on it briefly at the top of the video, is that it's been engineered yeah. and developed to be fun to drive on the road mm -hmm. at sort of moderate speeds. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a really crucial point. And when we jump into the McLaren, we'll be saying something Broadly similar. This is so. This has got 252 bit 252 bit brake, and it weighs just over a ton, doesn't it? It's about 1,080 or something. Is yeah. that right? So it's a really accessible amount of power and it's, weight, isn't it? It's an amount of power that you can use on the road. Yeah. You can really tap into all of that performance. And then, because the car is so light, it feels quick. You don't feel you don't feel short change. The engine. Maybe it's not the most electrifying power unit out there. So it sounds all right when you get up it. Like it that, does, doesn't it? It does Proper sound little right. rasp, little old school hot hatch rasp, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, do That's really cool. I've never been in an original A110 or A310 or anything, so I don't know whether that sounds in any way authentic. In any way like it, yeah. I think it's pretty clear, though, that you and I both are quite smitten with this little, little I A110. It. Yeah, I think it's great. And, it's, and it is. Like you say, it's bringing down the accessibility of its performance, isn't it? You know, the, the cars are the cars are too fast for the visibility and the conditions, and for people calling you a Burke and everything else. So to have a car that brings that back down to accessible levels means that some of my favourite cars at the moment are this Hyundai i30 N and the revised MX-5 and stuff like that, GT86, which I've been loving for ages. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. When I very first drove this car. 
I drove it on some great roads in France and I thought, you know what, this little thing feels like a baby McLaren. Yeah. So I reckon we should jump into the other car and see if there's actually any truth in that. Okay. So Mr. Daniel Prosser, this is the McLaren 570S track pack, which is, what, seats? These are, they're good, aren't they, actually? They're, they're great really seats, yeah. great seats, but basically it's a 570, yeah. Basically a 570. Which, so we're three and a bit times the price of the Alpine. Yeah. But I agree with you, mate. In, in making a car where they've gone, actually, let's not worry about the lap times, although McLaren don't quite a lap time anyway, usually no. do they, they don't like to. But they've just brought feel and finesse and just all of that driving finger to be goodness. That, yeah. You know, that, that on the road is the key. On the road, well, yeah, exactly. It? That it's that I think this, as a result of that, despite being the least powerful, the almost well, the almost least powerful, the almost cheapest car they make, I think this is the most enjoyable car that they have. I, I agree. I think I, it's fantastic. Yeah. Because I it, it does something, as you said, it does something similar to the Alpine in that it sets out to be fun and rewarding on the yeah. road. Yeah, and there's still loads of integrity to it, isn't it? So you can still feel the fact that it's got this really stiff carbon fibre tub. Yeah. It's beautifully put together. It's nicely designed inside. The driving position is just fantastic. The driving position is all on. McLaren's is just brilliant, isn't it? It's so good. And you, you only realise how important a good driving position is when you sit in a car with a great driving position. You just yeah. think, wow, yeah. this, is think this is as it should be. Uh, visibility is pretty good. It's not as wide as some supercars, is it? I think it's easy to place. Absolutely. And it just, uh, from a road perspective, all of that stuff makes such a massive difference. It rides well, mm. but the body movements are really well contained because it doesn't weigh a great deal. Clearly, there are some fairly stark differences between these two cars, and one of them is straight line performance. Yeah, because I know I've said lap times and blah 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 aren't important and everything else. However, <laughs> let's bear in mind, yeah, let's bear in mind, it's still. I mean, it's still ludicrous, isn't it? 570 so brakes. The dry weight is what, tw uh, 13 something? 13 something. something. It's still got carbon ceramic discs. You know, it's the road car, it's the nice one, it's the approachable one. But I still think you'd go to most track days and drive around the outside of pretty much everybody else there. It just still has. The way it, is. it still has that in its pocket, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. What don't you like about a McLaren? What don't I like about that? Well, that's the question. Um, if you were using one every day, there are certain things about it that would start to to great compared to other rivals. So yeah. it's difficult to get in and out of yeah. compared to a 911, say. Mm -hmm. Things like, it's got a front axle lift, but it's fiddly to activate it. So when you yeah, find yeah. yourself at a car park oh. and you have to lift the nose and you can't remember how to do it. You just keep adjusting the light, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, brilli the brilliance of the lights exactly. on the dash. That's yeah. true. Um, I like that, I love the handling balance. It just about gets away without having a lift to the doesn't it? I yes. think most of the time. Yeah. Um, I love the way it steers, I love the, I love the ride. I'm, I'm always a, a bit, I always get a bit irritated by having to, having to do that before I can then adjust anything on the powertrain or anything else. The whole, how you adjust the chassis and powertrain thing is just a little bit more compl complicated than I think it ought it to be. be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right, generally, it's a great car to live with day to day as well, isn't it, I think? Well, it's just, while, we're, while we're talking about things that we're not so sure about, yeah. This is absolutely not relevant to this video at all. However, it's grated me for years, and so yeah, I want it. to get it yeah, on the record. Right right. <laughs> the armrests, the angle of the armrests, yeah. right? It follows this section in the door, the armrest section, follows the shape of the carbon tub. Yeah. And it means that it swoops down from quite a high point, and where you want to rest your, your arm, your elbow sits on this section. It's at a really steep angle. Okay, this is the most pathetic complaint I will ever make about a car. But over a long no, journey, as I've, as I've discovered, it really hurts your elbow. <laughs> <laughs> so if they could just lift that slightly and pad it. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, anyway, let's move on from that because it's a completely pathetic complaint. While you were having that complaint, though, God. I was enjoying it. steers so beautifully, doesn't it? It's just, it's so... McLaren retain hydraulic power assistance, exactly. rarely, and it's just so perfectly linear and responsive and the weight builds just off straight ahead as it should because it is it's not you know it's not it's not trying to replicate what that feel is it's sure. just it's just it's authentic it's just putting it through and that's just it's so lovely and it's such a lovely thing to drive it, it is it is a gorgeous thing to drive and clearly it's got loads more straight line performance than the alpine clearly yeah. it's got loads more cornering performance than the alpine mm -hmm. but 
even though you're traveling along the road at a much greater speed, it does do the same thing when you start to approach its limits. And that's that its grip bleeds away gradually because it, it's not overtired. And so what that means is you can actually play around with the car a little bit yeah. and enjoy the balance and feel the grip at the front axle or at the rear axle ebbing away and play with it in that window. And that's something the Alpine does as well. Does this do that at too high a speed to do that on the road? Yeah. It's, it's possible, it is possible. But yeah. if, you're, if you're prepared to take a few, few little liberties, you can pick, access pick that window. Moment. Yeah, exactly, pick your moment. All of which brings me back around to the reason I wanted to shoot this video in the first place. Yeah. This car and the Alpine A110 demonstrate for me a really, really important point about road-going performance cars. It isn't outright power, outright performance, or outright grip that makes a car fun to drive. It's being able to drive the car at or around the limit of its abilities, at or around the limit of its grip, that makes a car fun. When you feel like you, the driver, have got the car just on the edge and you're playing around with it, it feels fantastic. If it's got so much performance that you can't use it on the road and so much grip that you're nowhere near the limit of, it, of what it can do, that car is ultimately frustrating. That's a really interesting point, isn't it? Yeah, because there's a lot you can do, isn't there, with engagement with a nice engine noise, a nice steering feel, the right ride quality and yeah. everything else, but you kind of have to be a slightly weird old purist to just enjoy that. You're right, it, you're right there is nothing quite as enjoyable as ragging a car and when it talks back to you and when you can do that within the realms of safety that's where it's exactly that's where it's fun isn't it? that's yeah for me that's where a car is at its best and I think both of these cars are two of the best exponents of that art form currently on set I agree mate